There are many deaf people around the world who use sign language daily. We believe that we are not disabled and that being deaf is not something to be upset or worried about. We believe that we are perfectly normal and have our own culture. But when hearing parents suddenly find themselves with a deaf baby, understandably they are quite surprised, even shocked. Those parents are not sure what to do with their deaf child. The birth and the revelation of a deaf baby is a confusing and overwhelming time for them. Can we blame the hearing parents for being shocked or for their reaction? No, it's not their fault. Then whose fault is it? We can say it's probably the hospitals and the people who work in early intervention, to name a few. The way they share information can really make the parents fearful. For those hearing parents, this deaf baby is probably the first deaf person they ever met in their lives. Being shocked and uncertain is very normal for parents in this situation. Again, it isn't their fault here. Now imagine the very first meeting when the parents sit down with the doctors and the early intervention people. The parents are outnumbered by the professionals, sometimes by as many as seven to two. Obviously at this point, the parents are scared because this big power imbalance suggests that something is seriously wrong with their baby. At this meeting, the very first thing the doctor typically says with a mournful face is, I am sorry. Sorry? Why would the doctor say that? Of course the parents are really scared now. Many terms doctors use have a huge negative impact on the parents. Everything is presented as negative. The doctor says, your child has been diagnosed. Wow, a strong word, diagnosed. That term is typically used for diseases, cancers, or illnesses that lead to death. Is death in this category of grave illnesses? No, it's not. Instead, the doctors could use the word identified, as in, we have identified your child to be deaf. The term identify seems a more normal, acceptable, and positive one. Then the doctor says, your child has a hearing loss. So it seems that the child lost his hearing? The child probably never had any hearing to begin with. Instead, doctors could use terms such as hearing level or hearing status. Next, the doctor typically says, since your child is deaf, we need to discuss communication options. This is when parents receive the impression that they must pick only one option. They must pick sign language only, or spoken language only, a cochlear implant, or cute speech. The strong implication being that they must pick one of these options. Of course, the parents are now under intense pressure to make a decision right now. Pick one. Instead, doctors could say, there are communication opportunities. The child can learn to sign and also get a cochlear implant and learn how to speak. The doctor can assure parents that both of these opportunities are important. Emphasizing that the parents must select one quote-unquote option only serves to make the parents anxious. Now here's another term that ought to be changed. In hospitals, the term early intervention is used. This is recommended to the parents. Early intervention is a term used commonly all over America. However, the word intervention suggests that the doctors are stepping in in the midst of a huge problem to help the parents solve this terribly disruptive situation. This makes parents feel helpless that they have nothing to offer and leads to them doubting themselves as good parents. A better term is involvement. They should put more emphasis on saying things like, we're here to support you and provide you with information. However, the decision is still yours. This approach would be less invasive. Here's another example of negative terminology. The audiologist will say, your child has failed the hearing test. This says that the baby has failed his first test ever. It isn't the baby's fault, failed is the wrong term. Instead, doctors could note, refer with an explanation. Doctors sometimes also say, your child may have vocational limitations and further suggest that the child's future is uncertain alluding to the fact that the child might not be able to attend college or find a job. These comments scare parents. The truth is that a deaf child has unlimited opportunities. Doctors and hospital personnel typically also say, we know you're grieving, so we'll get you a counselor to work with you to discuss the grieving process. This drives home the strong assumption that the parents are beset with a very serious situation, so serious that they are routinely told they need counseling. 
Why don't doctors use the term journey? They can say having a deaf child is a journey in life, and you'll learn a lot of new things on this journey, thereby helping the parents view the experiences they will have with a deaf child in a positive light. Often we see and hear words such as disabled, handicapped, can't do this, can't do that, and other negative terminology applied to deaf people. For example, parents are almost always told your child needs technology to function, specifically the kind that fixes the ear. That kind of thinking is limited, focused only on the hearing mechanism. Instead, doctors should say there are visual and audio technologies. This is a good thing. Parents should be informed that there are visual technologies, such as doorbell lights so the child will know if someone's at the door, and telephone lights as well. Several research studies have shown that the typical first meeting with a doctor leaves parents feeling overwhelmed with tons of unexpected information. They go home from the hospital with their newborn and numerous brochures. They are frightened and uncertain what to do next. Several research studies have also shown that if cultural aspects are discussed at the hospital, if the doctor informs the parents that there are deaf adults who excel in higher education, that many have full-time jobs in a variety of fields and doctoral degrees, the parents leave the hospital with a sense of relief and the idea that their child can have a normal life, rather than thinking that their child is viewed as not normal or handicapped. It's also been shown that if an actual deaf adult role model meets with parents, it makes a huge difference in the parents' thinking about deaf people. They realize that deaf people are able to communicate, are intelligent, and okay. Deaf role models at hospitals are the missing link.